This is for the 3-4 class, and uh, we're going to start the day by singing. Uh, it's a song that you probably already know, but I'll remind you what the words are. And I'm going to play the piano with it. Uh, we don't usually have a piano in our class, but uh, <laughs> it won't be fancy. Uh, so we're going to start with... Now don't forget, we're not trying to sound like we're on the radio. We're not trying to sound like anybody. We're just singing our best. So sit up nice and straight or stand up nice and straight and take a nice big breath. And we're going to sing. I have a dear old daddy for whom I nightly pray. He has a set of whiskers that are always in the way. I know you remember it. Okay, here we go. I have a dear old daddy for whom I nightly pray. He has a set of whiskers that are always in the way. Oh, they're always in the way. The cows eat them for hay. They hide the dirt on daddy's shirt. They're always in the way. Do you want to do the first verse again? I have a dear old daddy for whom I nightly pray. He has a set of whiskers that are always in the way. Oh, they're always in the way. The cows eat them for hay. They hide the dirt on daddy's shirt. They're always in the way. Second verse. It says, father had a strong back. Now it's all caved in. He stepped upon his whiskers and walked up to his chin. Father had a strong back, now it's all caved in. He stepped upon his whiskers and walked up to his chin. Oh, they're always in the way. The cows eat them for hay. They hide the dirt on daddy's shirt. They're always in the way. Here we go with verse three. Father has a daughter. Her name is Ella May. She climbs up father's whiskers and braids them all the way. Father has a daughter, her name is Ella May. She climbs up father's whiskers and braids them all the way. Oh, they're always in the way. The cows eat them for hay. They hide the dirt on daddy's shirt. They're always in the way. And the last verse says, I have a dear old mother. She likes the whiskers too. She uses them for dusting and cleaning out the flu. And when we first learned this song, we talked about what in the world is a flu, that mother is cleaning the flu. And if you remember, the flu is the part of the fireplace where the air goes up. So the fire is below and it needs air to feed the fire. And it also needs to have the air from the fire go somewhere and not in the smoke and stuff and not come in the house. So in a fireplace, the fireplace always has a chimney an indoor fireplace anyway, and the air goes up the chimney. And the inside part of the chimney that would get all dirty and sooty from the leftovers from the fire, that is called the flu. So mother cleans the flu with the whiskers. Hi. <laughs> There's the phone. Ah, dear old mother, she likes the whiskers too. She uses them for dusting and cleaning out the flu. Oh, they're always in the way. Cows eat them for hay. They hide the dirt on daddy's shirt. They're always in the way. Thanks for singing with me. I hope you were. Uh, maybe some people in your house can sing with you. We're going to sing another song. We just started this song uh, a couple of classes before, um, you know, we all had to bring our things home and stay home. Uh, this one is Father Lead Me Day by Day, and we discovered that in this hymn there are some fancy words, words that are sort of old words that used to be used in English and <laughs> that we don't use very much anymore. So let's take a look at what our words are. We have Father Lead Me Day by Day. Um, we know all those words. Now, Father, this is a prayer. God in heaven is a father to us. He loves us like a father. He loves us even better than a father uh, because his love is perfect. Um, and he loves us like his children. Father, lead me day by day. So we're praying to him. We're talking to him and we're asking him to, to help lead us, to help show us how we should be. 
ever in thine own sweet way. Thine means your. Ever in your own sweet way. So God's ways are good. So they're sweet. Uh, teach me to be pure and true. Show me what I ought to do. Ought is another one of those words that we talked about. It means show me what I should do. All right. I'll play the tune and then we'll sing it together. Father. on so that my voice comes through a little bit better and this one I'll probably be looking at the piano a little bit more ready take a big big breath straighten up so that your lungs have lots of room and enjoy singing father lead me Here's verse two. We're going to talk about the words a little bit. I've uh, pulled the camera closer. <laughs> I'm uh, still working on, I know the focus isn't quite to my satisfaction and it's a little easier to see this way. I will push the camera back in a minute. But uh, the second verse says, when in danger, make me brave. Make me know that thou canst save. So there's a couple of uh, old English words in that. Thou means you. Make me know that you canst, is a fancy way of saying can or do, make me know that you can save. So God is, he is the one who made the world. He is, he is powerful. He is strong. He can always and does always save us. So make me know that you can save. Um, he keep me safe by thy dear side keep me safe by your dear side because god is precious and he loves us and he is always with us and it's it's sort of us that needs to stay by his side in a way well he's always with us um but when we are when we have him in our hearts and when we have him in our lives um he guards our hearts and he um he is with us so that we have uh, his help to make good choices and to um, for the important things to stay strong. Um, keep me safe by thy dear side. Let me in thy love abide. Let me in your love abide. Okay, I'll push back the camera. And the words go a little bit out of focus. All right. Second verse. When in danger, make me brave. Make me know that thou canst save. Keep me safe by thy dear side. Let me in thy love abide. I hope you are singing and learning them, getting used to the words, the fancy words that we have. We're going to talk now about families of instruments. Uh, so far this year, we have talked about percussion instruments and uh, we've talked about other families of instruments, uh, but we haven't learned uh, about any specific ones in the other groups um, <laughs> yet. Uh, but today I'd like to talk about the, the four different groups of uh, instruments that can possibly be played. We, uh, 
we learned that the percussion instruments uh, have a, a certain thing. They e are either hit or shaken or scraped. So I'm going to write here that we have percussion instruments. Percussion. And they can be hit or shaken or scraped. We also have stringed instruments. And stringed instruments, uh, <laughs> it's a dead giveaway in the name. Stringed instruments always have strings, uh, such as violins or guitars or banjos or um, harps. So I'm going to write a category for string instruments. Let's see here. Stringed. And there is a third group of instruments that we call the woodwind section. Woodwinds are instruments that, when they were first made a long, long time ago, because instruments have been around for <laughs> centuries, um, they were made out of wood. So things like flutes and oboes and bassoons were all made out of wood uh, when they were first made. Now we see flutes that are made out of metal, and there are metal parts on the other instruments. But woodwinds are all instruments that used to be made out of wood, with the exception of one, uh, the saxophone is not an old enough instrument that it was ever made of wood. The saxophone is a relatively new development, but it's still a woodwind instrument. And what makes it a woodwind instrument is the way the air moves. So uh, between the fact that they used to be made of wood and the way the air moves, that's how we know that it's a woodwind instrument. So uh, a flute, the air moves across a hole and some of the air goes into the hole and some of the air goes across the hole and that's how the sound is made. With a bassoon and uh, an oboe, there are two pieces of wood that go in the mouth and they vibrate and that causes the sound. And uh, with a clarinet and a saxophone, there's one piece of wood and it goes in the mouth and it vibrates against the instrument and that causes the sound. So we're going to write down the woodwind. Woodwind group of instruments. And our last group of instrument is the brass section. The brass section uh, is probably, there's a pretty good hint for how you know if it's in the brass section. I'm going to write the word brass. And the brass section is all of the instruments that have a mouthpiece that has a shape like that, that you put your lips up against. And then once your lips are up against them, then you make your lips vibrate. And that's what causes, um, that's what helps to cause the sound. So we all tried this. If you were in class last year, then we tried this and, um, the way that your lips vibrate is like like that. So if you want to try that right now, go ahead. And I brought, this is one type of brass mouthpiece. They all look a little bit different, but you can see at the end, there's this hole. Um, and that is what you put your lips against. So this is your clue that it's a brass instrument. If their lips go up against it and their lips vibrate. So there are four sections, strings, percussion, woodwind, and brass. Now let's see if we can figure out which section some of these go in. We have a picture here, trombone. Which section do you think it goes in? Does it have strings? Nope. Is it hit, shaken, or scraped? Nope. 
these two are a little trickier. Does this look like it was wait, could ever have been made of wood? It wasn't. It was never made of wood. And if you look really closely, you can see that the mouthpiece is similar to what we had here. So I'm going to put this in the brass section, trombone. How about this? Symbols. I'll let you think. There aren't any strings. They're not something that you blow across or make vibrate. They're not something that you put your lips on. So that leaves us with percussion. They are hit. How about this one? Violin. Can you see the strings? That means it's in the string section. How about this one? Whoops, I'll put it over here. That one is a flute and the air goes across this little hole here. So that is not the same kind of a thing as this, but there is air going on. It doesn't have strings. It's not hit shaken or scraped. It is having air going on, but it does not have a mouthpiece like this. So that goes in the woodwind section. All right, let's try this one. French horn. What do you think? Do you see the mouthpiece? I know it's not very big. That's going to go in the brass section too. What about these? Yeah, hit, shaken, or scraped. We'll put that in the percussion. How about this one? Tuba. Yes, it has a mouthpiece like this. We'll put it in the brass section. Oh, my magnet's doing pretty well. <laughs> How about this? I'm not really satisfied with my camera here. Can you see it? That's a little better. Yes, you can tell that one's hit because it has the sticks there. That's a percussion instrument. That one's a marimba. How about the cello? That one has strings, so that goes in the string section. I'm gonna stop putting things on that. Oh, let's do, I'll do two more. How about double bass? That one goes in the string section. <laughs> Here goes my magnet. I'll put two. How about the bassoon? That one has air that has to go into it in order for it to make a sound. It doesn't have strings. It's not hit, shaken, or scraped. But it does have, <laughs> this picture is hard to see, but it has two pieces of wood that go into the mouth. And that makes it a woodwind instrument. And it is made of wood. Let's do a couple more of these together. What about a trumpet? Brass section. That would go here. How about a guiro? I don't know what makes it focus. Is that better? Guiro. That would be percussion. How about a piccolo? That one's almost like a flute, just a lot tinier. That's a woodwind. How about a viola? That one has strings, doesn't it? So that would be the string section. 
and oboe. Oh, I just lost my pen. Oboe. That one has the wooden piece that goes in the mouth. It's very hard to tell by the pictures, I know, so it helps if you've seen some of these. We're going to look at some in just a minute. That would be a woodwind instrument. The oboe would be a woodwind instrument. And we have the clarinet. That one has a piece of wood attached with plastic that goes in your mouth. So that's also a woodwind instrument. And we have the saxophone. That one's the new one in the woodwind family. This instrument is woodwind because it has a piece of wood attached with the plastic that goes in the mouth and the air goes, you know, makes the wood vibrate. But this instrument was isn't old enough that it was ever made of wood. It always has looked metal. That goes in the woodwind section. What about the triangle? Yeah, percussion. That goes in the percussion section. What about timpani? Yep, percussion. If you thought it was percussion, you were right. All right. Now I'd like to show you something where you get to see the instruments being played, some of these instruments being played, and uh, see if you can figure out which family they go in. Now that we have talked about the groups of instruments, the families of instruments, I would like to show you a, a video of um, some people who have made a recording online. These people are all part of an orchestra. And as you know, an orchestra is lots of instruments, lots of people, usually all in one room, playing together. They play a piece that has been composed and they all have the music and they read the music together and they play the music together and usually a conductor helps them to um, play together. Now because of the health situation that we all are in all over the world and we all want to be careful about sharing our breathing and sharing our touching of different things because we want to help keep everybody healthy we don't, we don't want people to get sick. And so we're all doing this. So all of these people who are in this orchestra, uh, they're not, they're not in the same room together and, uh, they're all at home and they have decided that they want to still all play together. Um, so each of them hooked up their, um, you know, sound systems and they are, um, they have timed it so that they can play together and we can see them all playing their instruments at home and because of this it's um, set up so that we can see individual instruments a little bit easily and I'd like to show you this video they're, they're people from the Netherlands which is in Europe and it's a country that speaks Dutch German so in the video they uh, introduce themselves they say their name some of them say which instrument they play and then they're going to start playing a piece together um, which is written by Beethoven it's Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, and it's uh, just a little section of it, and uh, you'll probably recognize it. And while we watch this and listen to this, uh, I would like for you to, when the different instruments start, I'd like you to see if you can figure out which family they belong to, whether they belong to the string section, or the percussion section, or the woodwind section, or the brass section. So I'm going to um, start this. Now, um, with the system that I have in order for the sound and the picture to come through, um, the sound could be better, but I think you'll still be able to uh, hear it okay, and uh, hopefully there won't be too much of any little bit extra buzzing, but uh, I, I really enjoyed this. I think you will too. Hello, Alman. 
Ik ben Pierre Bijzer en ik speel hoorn in het Rotterdams Philharmonisch Orkest. Mijn naam is Maria Dingjan. Jan Janssen. Anja van der Maat. Juliana Sammerhalder. Kanaret Samson. Andrien Stukker. Simon Wierega en ik speel trompet. Wendy Lelyveld. Arjen Leenert. Pierre Volgers. Ik ben Rosalinde en ik speel als Joy. Daarom Lotto. Joseph Jinnelek. Ik ben Hendrik Jonas. Ilko Bijnema. Pieter Neutel. Ik ben Saskia. En ik ben Wim. Wij spelen in het Rotterdams Philharmonisch Orkest. We moeten ons aanpassen aan een nieuwe werkelijkheid. En oplossingen vinden om elkaar te steunen. Creatieve krachten helpen ons hierbij. En laten we out of the box denken. En innovatie gebruiken. Om het samen te doen. En ons verbonden met elkaar te blijven voelen. Als we het samen doen, gaat het ons lukken. Thank you for watching that with me. I'm going to um, just come back to the full screen for a second. The sound at the end, they were all uh, joining in with an audio that they must have been listening to so that they could be make sure that they were together. And at the very end, you heard singers. We did not see the singers in the video. So as you were watching that, um, the different parts that we were hearing of the music they would show the instrument that was playing at the time and i would like to go back through it with you and see if you were able to figure out which uh family uh of instruments each instrument was part of so i'm going to uh play it again and uh or at least show you the pictures i'll play a little bit maybe and then we'll stop <laughs> it'll be a little frustrating because i'll stop over and over but um to see if you figured out which instrument it was. 
So here we go. I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to hmm, go back to the beginning of that. I am Pierre Bazer and Spiel. And let's look at the first instrument that we started with. There's the first instrument we started with. So we can choose. It's stringed instruments, percussion instruments, brass instruments, or woodwind instruments. And if you guessed stringed instrument, you are absolutely correct. This is a stringed instrument. This is one of the biggest stringed instruments. It's a double bass. And uh, let's think about instruments. If they are small, is the sound going to be higher or lower? And if they are big, is the sound going to be higher or lower? This one is pretty big. Let's listen. Okay, so his sound, the double bass player's sound was pretty low. And that's because his instrument is big. His strings are long, his instrument's big, and so the sound is low. So then in this picture, we have the next instrument that has joined in. Is that going to be which family of instruments? It's going to be a stringed instrument. And this is a cello that just joined in. And his sound is, um, the notes are a little bit higher because his instrument is a little bit smaller than the double bass. Okay, and now we're going to keep going and we're going to find the next instrument that joins. Here we go. This instrument. Do you, what group do you think it's in? Percussion, string, woodwind, brass. It's another string instrument. This one is a viola. It's, sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between violas and violins because they look very similar. They're held by the person the same way. But this instrument is bigger than a violin. Um, and because the instrument is bigger than a violin, then the sound is a little bit lower than a violin. The notes sound a little bit lower. Now, we're hearing all the instruments that are playing, so it's hard to pick out the viola, but I'll play a little bit of this so you can hear that there's another higher sound. So that was the viola. Let's come a little bit further along. Okay, now we have another instrument right here. We can't see the whole thing because it's a big instrument. Do you think that this instrument is a string instrument or a percussion instrument or a brass instrument or a woodwind? If you guessed woodwind, you were right. Oh, there's my dog. I don't know what she heard. <laughs> She's sort of saying hello to something. Um, so this instrument that's in front of us is a woodwind instrument. You can see that there's wood in that instrument. It's a bassoon, and the bassoon is one of the bigger woodwind instruments, so it's a low sound. It's not super easy to hear on the recording, but let's try. He's the part that's moving in sort of in a different direction from the strings. Let's try the next instrument. Oh, here's another one. What family do you think this one's in? We have percussion, uh, strings, brass, or woodwind. If you guessed woodwind, you are correct. This man is playing a clarinet, and that is part of the woodwind family. And let's listen for the sound of that one. The clarinet was playing the same tune as the strings, but you could, if you, <laughs> if you could listen really carefully, you could hear his sound was pretty mellow, very different from a string sound. Um, all right, let's try some more instruments when they come in. Uh, I think I forgot to show you an instrument. Okay, I'll show you these. Oh, okay, this one. This one here. 
It's not quite as big as the fellow with the baseball cap, but it's the same family of instruments. So yes, it's a string instrument, and this one is a violin. And the violin has higher notes than the other string instruments that we had seen so far. So the double bass was the big, big one, and the cello was still pretty big. And then the viola looks the same as a violin, but it's bigger. And now this is the violin, and let's hear what it sounds like. <laughs> Now we have another instrument. This one is not a string instrument and it's not a percussion instrument. This one is a woodwind instrument. It has, um, it looks metal, but this is a flute and it used to be made out of wood when they first made flutes. And uh, the flute is part of the woodwind family because she does not have a mouthpiece that she is buzzing her lips again. She's blowing the air. And uh, what else do I want to say about flute? Let's see what it sounds like. All right, you can sort of, it's not easy to hear them because there are many instruments playing. Uh, same as in an orchestra, it's hard to pick out the sounds of the different instruments. All right, these are not stringed instruments and they are not percussion instruments. If you guess that they are brass instruments, you are exactly right. These are French horns. It's also a little bit harder to hear it because I keep stopping so you can't hear what was in before those instruments joined. All right, I'm gonna show you the next picture. This lady is playing an instrument. Let's figure it out. Stringed, woodwind, brass, or percussion? If you guessed woodwind, you are right. This is an oboe. An oboe has a very distinct sound. It's usually pretty easy to hear because it has almost a, it, it cuts through the sounds of the other instruments. It's very clear, clear sound. Let's see if we can hear it. Uh, where does she come in? All right. And where's, oh, there he is. What kind of instrument is that? Stringed, woodwind, brass, percussion. You can see his lips are against a mouthpiece so that he can buzz his lips that's a big hint that is a brass instrument and you can tell it is made of metal that's the trombone let's see if we can hear it i can't hear him all right are there any other instruments I think we have all the instruments. Oh, this one that's showing right now. We didn't look at that one yet. What do you think? Stringed, percussion, woodwind, brass. That is a brass instrument. That's a trumpet. All right. I am going to go back to the beginning and we can listen to the whole thing one more time. Starting from where they play their instruments. And if you're really clever with your ears and paying good attention, you can hear each instrument as it joins. You have to be really listening for some of them. All right.
as you can see from the sign at the end, that was the Rotterdam Philharmonic Orchestra and <laughs> their sign is not in English. So I will stop screen sharing. And I hope you enjoyed that as much as um, I did. <laughs> and uh, I thought it was pretty, pretty neat to see them playing together, even though they weren't in the same room. And it made it easier to see the different instruments because when uh, they're sitting in a group, all in an orchestra, it means that we're further away and it's harder to see each instrument as it starts. So it was kind of interesting. I am glad that we could have this music class together today.